We've got tons of leaks to talk about for the RTX 50 Super Series cars, including the 5070 Super, 5070 Ti Super, the 5080 Super, possibly even an RTX 5060 Super. And when is AMD gonna launch a higher end RDNA 4 graphics card like the RX 9080 XT or possibly 9090 XTX? Welcome back to PC Builder. I'm Jason. This is our July 2025 Q&A. These questions and more coming up. If you get value out of this video, please give a like, it makes a huge difference to the channel, and subscribe for more cool PC content. Let's jump into it. This video is sponsored by VIP SCD Key. Say goodbye to crazy expensive Windows licenses and that terrible activate Windows watermark. Right now, use the links in the video description, head over to VIP SCD Key, and get a Windows 10 or 11 OEM license for a great price. Pick your product license, then use the PC Builder discount code PC25 for an additional 30% off. Go to the activation settings on your PC, put in the code, and boom! Windows is fully licensed for a crazy low price. And they have Microsoft Office licenses too. Use the links in the video description. All right, we got tons of questions about what else? New GPUs, the RX 9090 XTX or 9080 XT that may be launching along with the NVIDIA RTX 50 series super cards. And I believe that these are very much interrelated. So let's go through these questions. We got Mormon dudes asking, do we think we'll ever see another high-end GPU from AMD? And then Ethan asked, do we think Think we'll see 9080 or 9090 from AMD this year. Well, Clint the Nest is asking, will the 9070 XT get back to MSRP? But more importantly, will the Super's pricing help out? And he's referring to the RTX 50 series Super GPUs. Now, I believe that whether or not AMD launches that high-end GPU, that's going to determine what NVIDIA does for at least part of its Super Series, especially the ultra high-end stuff. So let's go through that first, and then we'll talk about the, the Super Series. When do we expect these GPUs to potentially hit store shelves? And, of course, what do we expect in terms of the actual performance? Is this something that you should be waiting for? So what we know about the 9080 XT, or let's call it the 9090 XTX, mostly comes from leaker Moore's Law is Dead. So you can watch his full video. I will leave it linked down in the video description. It's like a pretty long video, it's 20 minutes long. I'm just gonna give you the breakdown here. He's basically saying that AMD has been playing around with a higher end version of the 9070 XT. And what they're gonna essentially do is they're gonna basically take it, right now it's on a four nanometer process, and they're gonna shrink it down, or they're gonna use a four nanometer process that allows super high end overclocking with it. Doing that and also adding in GDDR7 memory, they could get up to 32 gigabytes of VRAM, but that's not really the important, I think, interesting part of it. The interesting part of it, he's claiming anywhere from possibly up to 28 to 40% performance. Now, he's not saying this thing's going to be produced. He's saying he believes that AMD is playing around with this thing right now. I'm sure that they probably are playing around with something like this right now, given the success of the 9070 XT and the 9000 series generally. They're probably looking at, hey, could we produce something for the high end that could at least unseat the 5080? Mr. Bear, that doesn't mean, of course, the product's actually gonna come to market. He says this much. Again, watch this video for all the details, but I thought it would be interesting if we put this on a graph real quick, charted out the benchmarks here. So I went ahead and put in, based on the current 9070 XT, which I have tied right now with the 5070 Ti, based on recent benchmarks showing that they're roughly the same performance. If you go 28% above that, look at that. It would vault over the RTX 5080 at 1440p. This would be ultra details, obviously. At 40% performance, you're really knocking on the door of RTX 5090 performance at that point be pretty huge. And again, how much would AMD charge for something like this? Would it be a thousand dollar MSRP GPU and basically be a 5080 killer? Would it be a, a $1,200 GPU if maybe they got that 40% number and kind of be their 5090 equivalent for a lot less money where you're basically only getting 10% more performance with the 5090 for a whole lot more money for more than double the price. Mr. Bear. So when would AMD launch a 9080 XT or 9090 XT? Honestly, I don't think, maybe a September announcement followed by either an October or November launch, but that would be at the earliest. I think we'd see a lot more leaks if it were more impending than that, but probably they're gonna wanna do something to compete with Nvidia and the RTX 50 Super Series and it's probably gonna be around CES 2026, which would be in January, I think that's more likely. And let's talk about the 50 Super Series because I also think that's probably when it's gonna launch, maybe even a little bit later than that. But Copite 7 Kimmy has recently released a flurry of leaks. Now the first leak is a little older, about the 5080 Super. I don't think it's as exciting, but we'll definitely talk about the specs. But just a couple weeks ago, 
we got two more leaks that I think are way more interesting. The RTX 5070 Super with all the specs here. Also, we've got the 5070 Ti Super. And thank you, of course, to our video cards. They put all this in a handy and handy chart, so let's jump through it. For the RTX 5070, you can see it uses the GB203 die-300. It's a particular binning of that die. The 5070 Super is a slightly better die. It's dash 400. And instead of 6144 CUDA cores, it has a 4% increase in CUDA cores and a slight bump in power from 250 watts to 275 watts. Now, the way these GPUs are scaling, that basically would probably mean about the same performance. Probably gonna be about 4%, 5% more performance but the more interesting thing is it goes from 12 gigs of VRAM to 18 because it's gonna use the denser memory dies from Samsung, which basically allow 50% more memory using the same number of memory chips out there. And that would be way more interesting because the problem for the 5070 is not the performance, especially the price they're charging, it's the amount of VRAM because you start running out of VRAM when you turn on features like ray tracing, for instance. And that's NVIDIA's whole big deal thing. Oh, we got better ray tracing. Well, not the 5070 because it runs out of VRAM a lot of times, even at 1440p, we're not talking about 4K here. So that would be a huge uplift. The rest of them, I'm not as excited about. The 5070 Ti Super and the 5080 Super, you can see the same amount of CUDA cores, even though they're slightly better binned. And I think the reason they're slightly better binned on the die count there, it's basically because they wanna overclock these a little bit more. They wanna juice them up a little bit more. You can see the 5070 Ti Super uses 50 watts more energy, 350 from 300 watts. And then the 5080 Super uses about 55 more watts, 415 up from 360 watts. And of course, they are also gonna add some additional VRAM to each of them. They're basically doing the same thing. They're using the denser memory dies. So they're going from 16 to 24 gigabytes. To me, not a big deal for gaming, maybe for productivity applications, especially do like a lot of AI stuff. Maybe that makes a big difference. Maybe it also makes them a lot harder to find on the market because maybe people will start buying them for AI reasons instead of just gaming. Of course, we didn't even talk about the RTX 5060, which I do believe is going to get an updated model. I don't know that they're gonna call it a super series, but I believe they're gonna up the memory from eight gigabytes to 12 gigabytes using again, that denser uh, Samsung three gigabyte GDDR7 memory chips, and it will go to 12 gigs. I don't think they're gonna call it a super series. Now, this is just me speculating. It, obviously, that's just a marketing term. They can call it whatever they want. I think they're probably gonna wanna preserve the super for kind of the higher end stuff. And they may just call it the 5060 12 gigabyte because they'll probably wanna keep also manufacturing the eight gigabyte stuff because it's a lot cheaper out there. And I don't think we're gonna see much of an increase. There's only about 800 CUDA core difference between the 5060 Ti and the 5060 as it is. It's kind of hard to put a step in the middle there, but you never know. I do think that they are definitely gonna to go to 12 gigs. And I feel really bad for anybody who's right now buying an eight gigabyte RTX 5060. So should you be waiting for the RTX 50 Super Series or an RX 9080 XT or 9090 XT? Honestly, I think the earliest we're gonna see any of these cards on the AMD side is probably the fall, but much more likely it's gonna be January, maybe even into March, something like that. And then of course, on the NVIDIA Super Series side, I don't think they're even gonna launch some of these higher end Super Series cards unless AMD's able to get something out at the higher end. Because why would they launch a 5080 Super? AMD already can't compete with the 5080 and the 5080 price is 1400 bucks right now. They feel no motivation to lower the price down to MSRP, which is $950. It's almost $500 over MSRP. That is crazy, 50%. They feel no motivation to lower that price the way they have with, for instance, the 5060 Ti 16 gigabyte went from 500 bucks. They couldn't barely crack $480. As soon as AMD launched the 9060 XT 16 gigabyte at 349, what happened? Magically, that price went down to 429 for the 5060 Ti 16 gigabyte. Crazy how that happens, right? Same with the 5070. They magically got the price down to MSRP as soon as AMD launches a competing card in the 9070. So I just think that unless AMD launches a high-end GPU, we won't see some of these high-end super series cards. We may not even see anything thing called a super series. NVIDIA may just decide to reserve that name and said we might just get cards that are labeled the 5070 18 gigabyte and the 5060 12 gigabyte. In fact, if I were a betting person right now, I would bet my money on the latter rather than the super series. Again, 
if AMD can't get out a higher end GPU. But if they do get out the higher end GPU, I think the Super Series is almost a certainty. I certainly wouldn't wait for it though. All right, D-Dunham asks, if Nvidia leaves the gaming GPU space, who will take their place? Now, a couple of years ago, if you had asked me this question, and this is the crazy thing about it, I would have laughed. What a ridiculous question. But I think it's actually not only a very plausible question at this point, I actually think we might be seeing the handwriting on the wall through their financial reporting, through their financial reporting. Because if you look today at NVIDIA's revenue, the gaming revenue is about 6% of the total, 6%. I didn't say 60, I said six, as in 94% of the revenue comes from other sources, mostly that's AI. Normally, if you saw something like that, where it went from 85 to 90% of their revenue for gaming GPUs down to 6%, you'd be, oh, there must be a huge crash in the gaming GPU market. People must be abandoning PC gaming. In fact, despite as much as we beat PC gaming up, oh, is this the end of PC gaming? PC gaming is actually quite healthy in terms of its growth. It's continued to grow. It's grown more than console has. And Nvidia has become more dominant in the dedicated GPU market. And those revenues have remained either flat or they've increased over the couple of years. So what's going on is not that the gaming revenue has crashed, it's that their AI revenue has exploded like we have never seen anything explode before. This is like a gold rush times 10. And what we're seeing right now is the company basically evolving out of the gaming GPU market where the GPU market is what incubated it for 20 plus years. And now it's evolved into this other organism out there and now the gaming GPU market may actually be more of a weight around its neck or holding it back from potential continued expansion, then it, it's really worth it. Now, I don't think Nvidia is going to just say, hey, we're not gonna make gaming GPUs anymore. Tough luck, everybody. I think if anything, we would see possibly GeForce itself be spun off as a separate company because it has value. They'd wanna do a deal. They wanna spin off GeForce. And when you think about competitors, I don't actually think we're gonna see no more GeForce RTX GPUs out there. I just think the company that makes them may not be NVIDIA any longer. It might just be GeForce as a separate company that contracts with NVIDIA for design or has some kind of symbiotic relationship with NVIDIA. And that way NVIDIA can be freed up and the GeForce company can handle all the media and stuff like that because they've gotten a lot of bad media lately because of how they've handled launches, because of what they've been doing to the press. GeForce could now be their intermediary to kind of buffer them against that. And NVIDIA could just go on and get all the good press that they're getting in the financial press and others. And they could take that bad press that they're getting right now from gaming and PC hardware folks, and they could basically separate that out. And I think that might be actually, if, if you just look at it from a pure business standpoint, that actually might be the smartest move that they could make right now because they get all the benefits of it, including they sell design and stuff to GeForce, but then GeForce would have to go out and get its own silicon allocation from like TSMC or Intel or whoever. And Nvidia can now just generate everything into AI and they can kind of complete complete their evolution and probably then also just unlock a lot more growth in AI that they're being held back from right now. So I think if they do leave the space, it would probably be in the next two years. And if they do leave the space, I don't think GeForce ceases to exist. I think it becomes its own entity and then it, it basically, that becomes the new NVIDIA in the gaming GPU space and NVIDIA becomes a company we don't really talk about that much anymore other than like with AI stuff. So if Nvidia did spin off GeForce, what would be the impact of all this? Well, number one, I think that we would see a renewed design emphasis from GeForce on gaming features. I think a lot of this multi-frame generation AI nonsense would start to go by the wayside. I don't think they're gonna get rid of it, but I think for instance, we saw the 40 series and the 50 series, they're on the same process node. That meant there was almost no uplift for 50 series over the same 40 series cards. Why'd they do that? They did that because they wanted to maximize the amount of AI GPUs they could produce. And if they went to a more advanced node, which would have increased performance, that would have meant that they could have produced less GPUs. It makes sense, right? The older node is now more mature and they can get higher yields and they can just produce more silicon out there. So that's what they did. They decided to maximize profits for their AI group at the expense of the gaming performance. And all they sold us was a bunch of AI multi-frame generation features on top of it. RTX 5070. 4090 performance, impossible without artificial intelligence. And what they said were essentially very small 
price cuts to their MSRPs, which they haven't really been able to hit on any of the cards anyone cares about right now. So I would hope that GeForce would then be able to focus on improving rasterized performance every generation. They'd have to sell the gamers again, and they'd have to care about selling the gamers again. Would that benefit AMD or Intel? I don't know. It's really hard to say, but it used to feel like NVIDIA really cared about gamers and they really wanted to win gaming performance all the time. And now it feels like they just don't care anymore. And I, I think spinning off GeForce would possibly flip that upside down or flip it right side up again, and we might get better GPUs out of GeForce. All right, member Barry asked a question kind of in that same vein, which is, do I agree that PC gaming went down since NVIDIA introduced ray tracing and DLSS? First of all, those are two totally different things. I would just want to acknowledge these are totally different things and I don't necessarily see them the same way. Let's start with this one I think that's absolutely hurt gaming at a core level, ray tracing. Ray tracing to me, if we deleted ray tracing tomorrow, who would really notice? All you would notice is your frame rates would go way up, much more emphasis on things like HDR, going out and getting an HDR gaming monitor instead and having great HDR experiences. There are other ways other than ray tracing to have better visual experiences. If you're gaming at 1440p, what about gaming at 4K? I think ray tracing has really hammered older hardware that's not capable of it. I don't even think the current hardware is hardly capable of it. You need basically a 5070 Ti to actually be, for me, enthusiast level ray tracing. I'm not just talking about easy to run ray tracing games like Spider-Man or something like that. I'm talking about where the experience is fundamentally transformative on a relatively new title. Look at Indiana Jones and the Great Circle. I keep using that one, mostly because it, number one, it hammers GPUs, and number two, it hammers GPU VRAM out there. And I think we would even see some of the other GPUs out there with like 12 and eight gigabytes of VRAM doing a bit better on some of these newer AAA release titles because the ray tracing requirements would be less. I especially think that enforced ray tracing has really hurt everything. And I think game developers are less interested in spending time optimizing for PC. They do a couple of optimizations, right? You probably optimize for PS4, like older hardware. Then you optimize for current gen console. And right there, that's a huge portion of your overall sales. And then you turn to PC gaming, which probably about a third if you're doing multi-platform, a third of your sales, you're not gonna spend 10 times as much optimizing for just a third as you did on this, because you only needed a couple of optimizations for Xbox Series X and S, for the PS5, the PS5 Pro, and then maybe PS4, some of the older hardware. Now all of a sudden I have to have like 10 zillion optimizations for all the various PC hardware configurations I can have out there. They just don't spend the time to do it anymore. And yes, we can sit here and say, why don't game developers do it? They're just not going to. It's just not gonna happen. So I think being realistic, I think ray tracing has hurt them because they're not optimizing the titles in the way they need to be optimized in order to perform well. And then you get a game like Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 come out and it has no ray tracing and it looks great, it runs great on older hardware, and it's a smash hit. Meanwhile, you got games with like super high-end ray tracing, uh, you know, like, uh, what was that, the Hellblade recently. Not only do you shrink your audience by really hammering that GPU out there, you also don't make much in sales now. So I think that game developers, because NVIDIA spent a lot of money on getting game developers to get in there and do ray tracing, and ray tracing is the future and all that nonsense, everybody got sold a bill of goods there, we're kind of coming to realize that, hey, ray tracing has not been good for games, it hasn't been good for gamers, and it hasn't been good for gaming. Now let's flip that script for a second. DLSS has been very good. When I talk about DLSS, I'm not talking about multi-frame generation, which NVIDIA is trying to add in there because DLSS is so positive. Upscaling has definitely helped. Now when upscaling first came out, it was terrible. It looked like garbage. And then they got it to a point where at 4K, it started to look good enough and it would expand your frame rates at 4K. Now with DLSS 4 and also FSR 4, we're saying that even at 1440p, you can now use these technologies and they look good. Because again, you're upscaling from a smaller image. So if you're upscaling at 1440p, it's more than likely a much smaller than 1440p image, possibly down to 720p, depending on what settings you use, quality, balance, et cetera. And the less information you have, the harder it is to upscale to higher and higher resolution. So I think the DLSS and FSR4 and other kinds of upscaling solutions have definitely 
increased the availability of PC gaming for a lot of people out there. I think they've been very, very positive. So really two completely different things out there. If you got value out of this video, please give a like, it makes a huge difference to the channel. And of course, subscribe for more cool PC content. Like, did you check out our best GPUs in July, 2025? What's the best GPU to buy in July, 2025 at every budget level? Check it out and we'll catch you on the next one.